This year for Mother's Day, I decided to make my mom a custom farmhouse sign she could hang on the wall. I started out with a two foot by four foot sheet of one quarter inch plywood and cut a one foot strip off of it to make a two foot by one foot sign. I put painter's tape on my cut line to prevent tear out. Since I don't have the best blade in my table saw for cross cutting plywood, I still ended up with some tear out, but the edges of the plywood will be hidden by the frame and a farmhouse sign is supposed to look a little worn anyways. After removing the painter's tape and sanding it down a bit with 200 grit sandpaper, I painted the entire sheet with some white chalk paint. You can find more details on this paint and all the other products and tools that I use down in the description. The farmhouse sign is supposed to look weathered and worn, so after applying a few coats of the white paint, I used my random oral sander with 80 grit sandpaper to knock back the paint in random areas of the board to give it a slightly weathered look. Then I smoothed everything back over with 200 grit sandpaper and cleaned up the dust with a tack cloth. Next it was time to cut the stencil that would be used to make the lettering on the sign. In Cricut Design Space, I laid out the text and loaded some contact paper to be cut for the stencil. Now it was just a matter of sitting back and letting my Cricut do the hard work of cutting the letters into the contact paper. After weeding the letters off of the contact paper, I applied a clear piece of transfer tape, removed the backing from the contact paper, and proceeded to position the stencil onto my board for the sign. I found it to be a bit of a challenge to get everything lined up properly, but if you take your time and make some light reference marks on your board with a pencil, you can get everything lined up successfully. Before peeling off the transfer tape, I smoothed everything down with an old gift card to make sure all the edges of the stencil were stuck down. Next, it was time to remove the transfer tape. After grabbing a corner, I slowly peeled it up, leaving my stencil behind on the board. If you're new to the channel, feel free to scroll down below and click that subscribe button while I pull up this transfer tape. I make all sorts of projects while navigating the waters of woodworking, electronics, and 3D printing. Once the stencil is pressed down smoothly, there's still a chance that the color could bleed under an edge while painting the letters. So to help prevent that, I first go over the lettering with my white background color. This helps to seal the edges of the stencil, and if the color does bleed under, it will just be the same white background color. I then let this dry for 20 minutes before applying the actual paint color I want my lettering to be. My big mistake here was using a white stencil on a white background, which made it very difficult to see where the edges of the letters are. I used a makeup sponge to apply the brown chalk paint to the stencil. This sponge has a very smooth surface, helping to prevent any brush strokes in the lettering. After I finished painting the lettering, I immediately removed the stencil from the sign. If you leave it on while the paint dries, you will risk tearing the paint as you pull it up. It was so rewarding to reveal the nice crisp lettering lines as I slowly removed the stencil. With the main portion of the stencil removed, I still needed to pull up the middles of the letters. Once that was complete, I could then see that the painting of the letters had turned out perfectly and it was now time to get working on the framing of the sign. To frame the sign, I ripped down some pieces of poplar that I had lying around. You definitely could use pine for this and it would be less expensive and still turn out looking very nice. Once I had my boards ripped, I then moved over to the miter saw to cut them to length and to put a 45 degree miter on them. Lots of farmhouse signs are made by nailing the frame directly to the plywood, but this will show the edge of your plywood when viewing the sign from the side. So I fired up the router table and using a 1 quarter inch straight bit, I put a slot down the frame to slide the plywood into. Once I was finished at the router table, I gave the frame a quick sanding with 200 grit sandpaper, cleaned it up with a tack cloth, and then applied a dark Danish oil to it. Danish oil is a great finish to apply because it is so easy to use and really brings out the grain of the wood.
Once the Danish oil was dry, I slid the sign into its frame and glued up the miters using some clamps to help line everything up until I could tack the corners together with my brad nailer. I know I say this every time I use it, but this brad nailer is one of my favorite tools in the shop. Now all that's left to do is to add a couple sawtooth hangers to the back of the frame and this custom farmhouse sign is complete and ready to wrap up for my mom's Mother's Day present. I really think it turned out great, but the best thing about making a present for your mom is that she's required to like it. If you liked this project, feel free to scroll down below and click the like button. While you're down there, you may want to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss my next project, and you'll also find links to the products and tools that I used in the description. As always, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you for the next project.